Intellectual people respect and admire other people of great intellect. As a matter of fact, when in the presence of intellectual genius, they are humbled to their core. People who are athletes respect and admire great athletes. As a matter of fact, when in the presence of athletic greatness, they are humbled to the core. People who are money-driven respect and admire people who are multi-billionaires. As a matter of fact, when in the presence of the wealthiest persons of the world, they are humble to the core. Likewise, Lahavdil, someone who understands Rebbe's, will be completely humbled when in the presence of a great Rebbe. And someone who aspires to be a Chosid will be humbled when in the presence of a great Chosid. The verse in number says, Vo'ish Moshe Odomoid Mikolod Masha Adama. And the person Moses was the most exceedingly humble from all the people on the face of the earth. Now, what possibly could have humbled Moses? He was the most loftiest soul. He had the greatest and unmatched godly revelations. He was the greatest Torah grandmaster ever. He was the greatest Rebbe and leader the Jewish people ever had. Who could have possibly humbled Moses? The answer can be understood by a simple understanding. When there is a powerful light and energy, the closer you are to the source, the more you will be impacted by that light and energy. The further you travel from the source, the less impact it will have on you. The Medrash teaches us that God took Moses on a visual journey through all the future generations of the Jewish people. When he saw the final generation of the Golos, the exile, and specifically those of the end of that generation, he became humble to the core. Moshe and his generation experienced God in a manner in which no subsequent generation would ever experience. It had a profound impact on everything they did. It infused their daily service and observances. The next generation was one step removed from that, but still profoundly impacted. And he saw all the generations. Moses saw each one with a slightly diminished mastery of Torah. Each generation with a slightly less godly understanding. Each generation with a slightly less reason to study the Torah and observe the commandments. When he reached our generation, the final generation of exile, he saw a generation whose greatest scholars didn't even come close to a fraction of the average scholar of his time. Our best understanding of God doesn't even make it on the spectrum of having an idea. And yet, despite all of this, he saw a people committed to observing the mitzvahs. He saw a generation dedicated to God's commandments solely because it was the will of Hashem. Now this humbled Moses to the core. That one can proudly serve Hashem without having even a slightest dose of revelation was something he couldn't achieve. It impressed him so much to the point that the Torah describes him as being humbled. Why do me and you serve Hashem? It's not due to a revelation we experienced or reaching a depth of awareness in matters of holiness. We have no temple, no altar, we have no menorah and no high priest. Yet we serve Hashem with whatever little we do have, for we follow His instructions. In battle, it's not the generals who draw up the strategy who win the war. It's the frontline soldiers who don't have a seat at the drawing table who fight the battle and achieve victory. It's this soldier-like commitment that impressed Moses. He couldn't understand how it's possible to serve Hashem with all of our worldly distractions. Yet he saw that even absent Hashem's revealed presence, we still persevere. This is proof that we have something special that no one before us possessed. We will be the ones to do what no one before us could. We will bring Moshiach. The final days of Pesach are 48 hours where our minds and hearts should shift from our past to our future, from celebrating in Exodus 3,300 years ago to eagerly and excitedly anticipating the imminent arrival of our future redemption with the coming of Moshiach. Not through our intellect will we succeed, for our intellect is insignificant when compared to previous generations. Not through a godly feeling or a spiritual rush will we succeed, for our godly feelings and spiritual journeys are insignificant when compared to previous generations. We, through our performing mitzvahs, will be the ones to tip the scale to the side of good and usher in a world perfected and redeemed. Let us all connect with this special time, our future, during these final days of Pesach. Let us resolve to do more mitzvahs 
and we will merit this year to celebrate Mashiach's meal with Mashiach himself. I wish you a good Yom Tov and a good Shabbos.